and uniform magnetic field is produced by this large superconducting permanent magnet. Let's take a magnified view of this one. Let's have a magnified view to see the detail. See how the tissues which are revealed by MRI, they relate to the bone structure revealed by a CT scan. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is Larmor frequency. Under this topic, you will learn Larmor precession, Larmor frequency for an MRI scanner, and I will explain to you some solutions of some questions from Cambridge syllabus for A-level physics. As you have learned in the last lesson that MRI relies on the fact that some atomic nuclei behave like tiny magnets in an external magnetic field. Kindly remember that I have told you also that the human body is composed of 70% water. That means hydrogen is in abundance in human body. In MRI, magnetic properties of an isotope of hydrogen, which is called protium, are used to produce images. Protium has mass and atomic number 1. It has a single proton and no neutron. It's a spinning charge particle when there is no external magnetic field. Its nuclei spin at random orientation. But under the influence of the external magnetic field, their magnetic axis align themselves in the direction of an external magnetic field. As I have told you that hydrogen nucleus is positively charged and it has a spin. It behaves like a tiny magnets with two poles, north and south. Now, when there is no external magnetic field as in part A, what happens? These protons are aligned randomly. So, these are random orientations of protons or nuclei, hydrogen nuclei. Whereas in the second case, what happens? There is an external magnetic field. See this. This is the external magnetic field. North, south. This is the direction of the external field. So under the influence of this strong magnetic field, most of these tiny magnets, which are the hydrogen nuclei, they align themselves with the field. This alignment is similar to plotting compasses lineup. Majority lineup with their north poles facing the south pole of the external field. This corresponds to a lower energy state. Only a few line up the other way around, indicating higher energy states, that is an unstable state. So, which are unstable states or higher energy state? These, where north pole is facing towards north, but these are very rare. 1, 2, 3 and 4. All others, mostly, they align themselves with the external magnetic field. And this is just a a clear picture of the orientation of hydrogen nuclei and their axis under the influence of external magnetic field when radio frequency signals are sent. In this diagram, you, uh, you can see that this is a spinning top and it rotates about its axis. This is the direction of the rotation of spinning top. This is axis of rotation. Moreover, at the same time, this axis precesses about the vertical. This is the path of precession, which is the direction of the gravitational field. In a similar way, a proton spins as well as its axis of rotation precesses about the direction of the external magnetic field. Therefore, it must be clear that a proton does not align itself directly along the external field, but its magnetic axis, this one, it rotates about the direction of the external magnetic field. This rotation or gyration action is known as precession. Nuclear magnetic resonance and relaxation time. Now each proton absorbs a photon when its frequency equals the frequency of precession of its axis of rotation about the strong external magnetic field. Now after absorbing a photon, the proton jumps into the higher energy state. This phenomena is called nuclear magnetic resonance. Now, when the RF waves, radio frequency waves are switched off, what will happen? The proton gradually relaxes into their lower energy states by releasing photon, the excess energy in the form of radio frequency wave or photons, right? Now, these are detected and the rate of relaxation that follows an exponential form, 
see this is the exponential form so this rate of relaxation that follows an exponential form or pattern decay pattern tells us something about the environment of the proton and this relaxation time forms the basis of medical applications of nuclear magnetic resonance thank you for watching this is mri scan of a healthy human head different tissues in a healthy human head are colored differently because they indicate different relaxation times now the angular frequency of precession or the larmor frequency is denoted by omega naught and it is equal to gamma b naught where gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio and it depends on the individual nucleus and b naught is the magnetic flux density now it must be noted that omega naught is measured in radians per second that means strictly speaking it is not angular frequency but it is angular velocity because velocity's unit is distance divided by time now for protons this gamma is 2.68 into 10 raised to the power 8 radians per second per tesla and b naught for mri the external field is we know very strong which is of the order of 1.5 tesla thousands of times the strength of the earth's field so the precession frequency f naught comes out to be after calculation 64 megahertz which lies in the radio frequency region so the workout is given in the next slide so this is the workout we substitute values of gamma magnetic flux density and this we know pi is 22 by 7 which is 3.14 so it is f naught is 6.4 into 10 to the power 7 hertz and then we know that 10 raised to the power 6 means 1 mega so it is after simplification comes out to be 64 megahertz which is frequency of external magnetic field and it lies in the radio frequency region now another question is that protons precess at a frequency of 42.6 megahertz in an external magnetic field of flux density 1 tesla determine the frequency at which will they precess in a magnetic field of flux density 2.5 tesla and part b is state the frequency of radio frequency radiation that will cause the proton to resonate in this stronger magnetic field so always remember that f naught is equal to omega naught over 2 pi in part a we will substitute the value of omega naught which is gamma b naught gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio b naught is the magnetic flux density for protons we know just now we have solved one question that gamma is 2.68 into 10 to the power 8 into now field will be 2.5 so we will substitute 2.5 here and after simplification it comes out to be 106.59 megahertz the second part is state the frequency of radio frequency radiation that will cause the proton to resonate so in order to resonate you know for resonance to take place what will happen the incoming radio frequency waves and the frequency of vibration of the system should be same so this frequency 106.59 megahertz is resonant frequency as well system would should vibrate with the same natural frequency of the incoming radio frequency wave for resonance to take place main components of an mri scanner this lecture is third in this series earlier you have studied nuclear magnetic resonance imaging i have also discussed about larmor frequency before i start to discuss about main components of an mri scanner i would like all my listeners who have not done so far to like subscribe and share my channel this diagram shows uh, main components of an mri scanner this is a set of gradient coil longitudinal gradient coil here i have shown only one pair of gradient coil for clarity but in fact there are three pairs x y and z which are colored in red yellow and green respectively one pair is for the head region the second one for thorax and abdomen and the third pair is for smaller regions like limbs the magnetic field produced must be distorted or altered with gradient coils today I will also discuss the function of non-uniform magnetic field superimposed on the large constant magnetic field in diagnosis using MRI. This is a superconducting permanent magnet. These are RF coils, RF receiving coil and RF 
transmitting coil. The computer controls data acquisition, image reconstruction, and image storage. Now, in the next slides, you will learn function of each part separately in further detail. So this is a block diagram that indicates positions of RF coil, gradient coils and magnet in an MRI machine. And here you can compare same parts that these are in the same order in this machine. Let's take a magnified view. See first magnet, then gradient coils and then RF coils or radio frequency coils. And this part is the scanner. And this is patient table and this is the patient. Now first of all we will discuss the function of gradient coils. These produce an additional external magnetic field that varies across the patient's body. These coils are arranged such that they alter the magnitude of the magnetic flux density across the length, depth and width of the patient. This ensures that the normal frequency of the nuclei within the patient will be slightly different for each part of the body. This means that only a small volume of the bodies are at exactly the right field value for resonance. And so the computer can precisely locate the source of the RF signal within the patient's body and construct an image. Now secondly, we will discuss superconducting magnet, this one. A very powerful and uniform magnetic field is produced by this large superconducting permanent magnet. Let's take a magnified view of this one. Now what happens? It's a resistive magnet and internal x-axis and portion of imaging is controlled by it. It is heavy and low cost. Internal core is made up of it that generates magnetic field all the time. The strength of this magnetic field, external magnetic field produced is up to 2 tesla that is needed to align the protons. Superconducting magnets are cooled to 4.2 degree Kelvin or minus 269 degree centigrade using liquid helium. Now these RF receiving and RF transmitting coils. Kindly note that these RF signals are non-ionizing radiations. This RF transmitting coil transmits RF pulses into the body and RF receiving coil detects the signal emitted by the relaxing protons. And this computer controls the gradient coils and RF pulses and also it stores and analyzes the received data and produces and display images. In our next lesson, we will study procedure and working of an MRI scanner and later on we will also study its advantages and disadvantages and compare a CT scan with an MRI scan as well. Today is the last lecture of the MRI series. Today's topic is MRI and CT scan. The biggest concern these days in imaging and radiology is to have a safe and yet a good quality diagnostic study. Both MRI and CT scans capture images within your body. Before I start this topic, I would like all my listeners who have not done so far to like, subscribe and share my channel and press the bell icon to get notification about my latest videos. An MRI uses radio waves and magnets and provides a more detailed three-dimensional structure of soft tissues, joints, ligaments and capsules. A CT scan or computed tomography, sometimes called as a CAT scan, is an X-ray machine hooked up to a computer. It provides a combination of a series of X-ray images taken at different angles. A computer program used to generate a complete image based on these X-rays is best to view for bone fractures, diagnosing lung and chest issues, for detecting tumors or cancer monitoring, and to find internal bleedings. In CT scan, suspected fracture in the bone gives more detail and info about the anatomy of the fractures for all kinds of abnormalities in bones accurately. As I have stated just now, that in magnetic resonance imaging, the image uses radio waves and strong magnets to create a detailed in-depth view of bones, organs and 
tissues. So I have taken as an example this image. This image has been colored to show up tissues which are identified by their different relaxation times. Let's take a magnified view of this image. Now these different tissues, they are identified by their different relaxation times. Safety issues, risk or disadvantage using an MRI. Heart pacemakers and patients having artificial joints, eye implants, vascular clips, plates from any previous fracture or any metallic objects such as surgical pins cannot undergo MRI scans. The reason is that magnets cannot be switched on as there is a probability of possible reaction to metals due to magnets. Moreover, no loose metallic object should be left in the room as these will be attracted to the magnet and the room must be shielded from external radio fields. Now let's compare an MRI with a CT. CT uses radiations to take the images, MRI uses only magnets. Hence, there is no radiation exposure. Secondly, MRI takes at least 30 minutes. Hence, MRI is a more longer study. A CT scan is very fast. It needs to be quick as it takes 5 minutes. Thirdly, there are no moving mechanisms in MRI, just changing currents and magnetic fields. In a CT scan, the patient bed moves slowly through the gantry. MRI is expensive than a CT. Also, there is risk of increase in body temperature during long MRIs. Moreover, there are loud noises from the machine. Hence, there is an anxiety due to being in the enclosed space of the machine for claustrophobics. Next is that CT does not show up the information, the MRI does. Stress fracture, stress response, stress reaction and mild stress fracture. They do not show up as well in a CT as they do in an MRI. Moreover, MRI gives better soft tissue contrast than a CT scan, although it does not show bone as clearly. So let's uh, take an example from Cambridge A-level curriculum for physics students. An MRI scan might be considered a safe procedure than a CT scan. A part is explain why it might be considered to be safer. The answer is that MRI uses non-ionizing radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, whereas CT scanning or CAT scanning uses X-rays, which are a form of ionizing radiations. B part is, why might a CT scan be chosen in preference to an MRI scan? Its answer is that CAT scans show up bone, which is poorly imaged by MRI. C part is, explain why MRI is described as non-invasive. Its answer is that the patient's body does not have to be cut open, nor do any instruments have to be inserted into the body. So this picture shows an MRI scan through a healthy human head. Here different tissues, which are identified by their different relaxation times, are colored differently. And this is a combined CT and MRI scan that shows how the tissues revealed by MRI are related to the bone structure shown by X-rays. So this is a combined effect. Let's have a magnified view to see the detail. See how the tissues which are revealed by MRI they relate to the bone structure revealed by a CT scan. Thank you for watching.